Hello, and welcome to 5 Minute Physics. Today's lesson is going to be looking at half-lives and radioactive decay. This is a topic that often freaks people out, but it's actually pretty simple. A radioactive substance is one where the atoms are unstable. We call an unstable atom a radioisotope. And radioisotopes become more stable by giving out nuclear radiation. We begin with what's called the parent radioisotope, and that decays, giving out some sort of nuclear radiation. It could be alpha, beta, or gamma, or a combination of them. When it's decayed, we produce something called the daughter isotope, and that's a new element. It's a different element from what we started with. We've also given out nuclear radiation. This process is called radioactive decay. Now, radioactive decay is a random process, and that means that you can't predict when any particular atom of a given radioisotope will decay. It could happen very, very quickly, or you could be waiting an extremely long time. Now, you might think you could speed up this process by heating up the atoms or by adding chemicals, but no, it doesn't work. Radioactive decay is what we call a spontaneous process. It isn't affected by external factors. Now, notice this atom and the one before are identical. They're both uranium-235, okay? But one of them took much, much longer to decay than the other one. And eventually, after enough time, they will both end up decaying, producing that daughter isotope. But it can vary an enormous amount between identical atoms. Although individual atoms behave randomly, if you put enough together, then a clear pattern becomes obvious. After a certain amount of time, half of the atoms in any sample will have decayed. We call this period of time the half-life. Half-life can be measured in seconds, in days, months, years, millennia. If you keep watching the remaining atoms, in your sample, after a second half-life, half of them will have decayed as well, and so on and so forth. Now every radioisotope has its own half-life. For example, uranium-235 has a half-life of roughly 704 million years. But at the other end of the scale, proactinium-217 has a half-life of about 3.4 milliseconds. And we can use the half-life to predict how many atoms are going to be left in a sample after a certain amount of time. Sketching a flow diagram can really help with this. So let me give you an example. Here we've got some americium-241, that's the radioisotope that's used inside smoke alarms, and it's got a half-life of 432 years. Now imagine you start with 100,000 atoms in your sample. After one half-life, after 432 years, you're going to be left with half of those atoms, with 50,000. After a second half-life, another 432 years, you are going to have 25,000. After a third half-life, so that's 1,296 years in total, you're down to just 12,500. And after yet another half-life, we've got 6,250. Now, you can use this diagram, and I really recommend you sketch one of these out in an exam, to go backwards or forwards in time. So for example, you knew the half-life was 432 years, and you were told that you had 6,250 atoms. The question might ask, how long ago were there 100,000 atoms. Well, you can do exactly this process, but in reverse, doubling it each time instead of halving, and you discover there were four half-lives involved again. Multiply four by the half-life, 432, and you'd have the total amount of time. You can also be asked to work out the half-life of a radioisotope using a graph. And this is something that freaks people out, but it's actually pretty straightforward. So let's look at our graph. Okay, We've got number of nuclei on the y-axis, or the activity. Now the activity is just the amount of radiation being given off per second. And just like the number of nuclei, the activity has the same half-life for the radioisotope. So for americium 241, from our example before, it would have a half-life, the activity would have a half-life of 432 years. Now the graph you're going to be shown always looks like this. And to work out the half-life from this is really straightforward. So pick a number on the graph. The sensible place to start if you can, if it's a nice round number, is where the graph begins at the y-axis. So pick that number, imagine it's 10,000, and divide it by 2. So 5,000. If you go across from the y-axis, from 5,000, to the line of the graph and then go straight down to the x-axis, you're going to read a time there. And that time is the half-life. If that time passes again, the second half-life has passed, 
then the number of nuclei will half again. So you would then have a quarter of the nuclei that you originally started with. So to summarize, radioactive decay is a random and a spontaneous process. Random means, as we said, that you cannot predict when any individual atom is going to decay. It also means, although this isn't in your specification, that um, you cannot predict which atom in a sample is going to decay next. And spontaneous means, of course, that you can't speed up or slow down the process. The half-life is the time it takes for the number of nuclei in a sample to reduce by half or for the activity to drop by half. The half-life can be used to predict how many nuclei are going to be left in a sample once a certain amount of time has passed, and you can work out the half-life using a decay graph. Thanks for watching this video. Um, we'll be uploading some more very shortly, so please subscribe so you don't miss out. Bye for now.